The Celtics have a decade ahead of them of potential championship runs if they grow a leader or get a leader. Because right now, Ime can't suit up. Yes, he's the big man and he's the adult mm-hmm. in the room. Al Horford, is his time is ending. And Al, as amazing as he was tonight, amazing throughout the entire playoffs, he... He he's not that. Hey, he's not twenty five. He's not twenty five. Not twenty five. Oh, oh, you want to talk about the the leadership aspect of it? Well, I mean, I think from a leadership standpoint, you look at Alan what he did this year. It was pretty uncharacteristic when you look at his career. I mean, he's always been the quiet leader. This year, he's been extremely vocal. He has had a great great season, but he's the past. Like you still sure. look at Al and you think of right, I, right. I don't even want to talk about it after that tweet today. But you look at, at Al and you think of IT and some of those we covered, Jimmy, those runs. We need somebody, the Celtics need somebody either within the current roster just to become, it can't be Marcus. I love Marcus, but he's an emotional train wreck half the time. Sure. So I, I see what Jalen doesn't have the, excuse me one minute, one more minute. Yeah, Jalen sure. doesn't have the, 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 the focus or discipline to dribble in the paint, let alone lead the team. Jason Tatum needed to be. Larry Bird tonight. He needed no, but that's not even fair. He needed to be Paul Pierce tonight. When you talk about leadership and things like that, I don't see a killer instinct with anybody on this team right now. They're almost like a ship without a captain, right? And you're just kind of floating or floating along. Now that isn't to say that there wasn't points throughout the season where Tatum wasn't freaking amazing. Oh, or Brown no, wasn't amazing. Or, right. But at the end of the day, when these these guys have to come together on the biggest stage and show that they belong there. And it just didn't feel like they did. The Warriors, we know they belong there. And we saw that time and time again. They have the killer instinct. They have the real, you know, Hall of Fame, top five, ten all-time player on their team in Steph Curry, who showed out this series. I mean, that was a guy who could not be denied um, a, a championship. I have a lot of the same questions about this team now that I did even when they were back when they were playing poorly. It, it, it doesn't mean I think they're awful. I thought they should have been playing much better then, but I still have a lot of the same questions. And I think a lot of people do as well. Um, and so, and that involves everybody. That involves Jason Tatum and who he's going to become. That involves, you know, Jalen Brown and what his ceiling is, the point guard situation, you know, d- bench depth, future. There's a lot of questions. I had those questions before. I still have them now. I'm not going to sit here and unload on the team. They lost. Golden State outplayed them. I, I don't like playing that veteran leadership. They've been there before sort of card. Uh, but the Celtics I like just – I, I mean – it's a basketball game. I don't think they shrunk because it was the finals. I think Golden State just played better basketball the, the, over they the last few games. I, and I, that's it. But I don't think it was like the Celtics were like, oh, geez, I just got – the pressure goes up, meaning everyone tries much harder in these games than they do in other games. They just couldn't handle the pressure from a really good team, and they wilted. Bottom line is Golden State's just a better team. Golden State played a better series. And you start looking at the role players that Golden State had – You've got a guy like Andrew Wiggins, who's a former number one overall pick. you got a guy like Jordan Poole, uh, you know, first-round pick. And then flip side, you look at the Celtics, Grant Williams, Derek White, Pritchard, that's, you know, <laughs> bottom line, Golden State. The Celtics could have won this series if they would have played as close to their max potential as possible. And that didn't happen. The Celtics, I thought, if you look at this series from top to bottom, they were okay. Well, okay is not going to get you a chip. OK is not going to beat a team like Golden State. And, John, I, I I agree with you. I don't think the whole experience thing was a factor. I think it was the fact that Golden State played better basketball. They made their open shots. They made turnovers. They forced you to do things that you were comfortable with. And your best player, Jason Tatum, did not play like your best player. He wasn't even the best player on his team, let alone in the series. Besides Tatum. How could you have a bench in the NBA Finals that scores five points? Well, the Celtics, Sherrod called it. Celtics did go to Hauser at the end of the game. It's just too little too late. <laughs> too little too late, Sherrod. Yeah, you called it. It's not how you envisioned it going. But, <laughs> but, but I mean, we got an entire summer to get into what the hell they need. But I think that this really, this entire postseason run has made it abundantly clear they need shooters. 
They need guys who actually have that as their specialty. I am at the point where I don't give a damn how bad you defend the ball. Don't if you can make even shots, apply. Don't even apply if you can't shoot. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. I mean, there, should, there needs to be like an open call for shooters. If you're six five or, or taller and you can shoot the hell out of the ball, damn. there's a spot for you. Sorry, Jimmy. Sorry, Jimmy. Uh, yeah. Jimmy just not, not, <laughs> Jimmy doesn't qualify. Just there, there no this Jimmy leads Cisano's. right into. This leads into Jimmy's wheelhouse here as we talk about offense versus defense. Defense is the reason this team went as far as they did. Defense is the reason they turned the season uh, around. Offense is the le- is the reason that they lost, and they lost in an embarrassing way. And everything you're going to address. So there is there has there's a tipping point there. Defense mm-hmm. is important, but again, every team, even good teams like Golden State. Milwaukee, Miami have guys on their team who have roles and those roles are to score the basketball. And those guys are guys you have to find creative ways to hide defensively. This weird insistence on, and maybe this is just how the roster construction ended up and they realized this year, okay, we're better off really locking in on D and just letting the wings cook. But if if it's a ph- philosophy that everybody here has got to play D because we got to be this switchable monster and that's the only way it works here, that's going to be a problem because – you need guys who can put the ball in the basket, and right now it's friggin' bad. Uh, and that's what that's what submarined them here. You have to have guys whose job it is to score and have sure. them actually be good at it. They can't be named Peyton Pritchard, you know, and nothing against him. He'll come in and get hot every once in Everything a while. Everything against him. It's, it's not a guy you're good. counting on, uh, you know. And this is one thing I. Uh, really got in on earlier in the year, this notion that Grant and Pritchard are solid bench pieces. No. What are you going to do this offseason, win or lose the title? You're going to go and you're going to look for people to play ahead of Pritchard and and, and Grant. You're going to look for guys who can be your seventh and eighth or sixth and seventh guys mm-hmm. coming off the bench. And you can get that maybe if you spend into the tax and you use the TPE and you use the MLE. Um, guys, do they need but, a point guard? But and and yes, you still do. That's kind of the problem. But we're not. I don't. We're gonna get. It's gonna become a whole off season show. But really, it's the offense. With I'm doubling down on what Sherrod said. People, the guys have to be able to shoot, or else what good are you here? That's literally. I mean, if you had to pinpoint all the things that the Celtics did wrong, if you could say, okay, we're gonna give you one, we're gonna give you one of the many things that you do wrong to add to your roster. What would that one thing be? And if that one thing was shooting. We'll probably have a different kind of celebration right now, because they, because they, those the basketball team that can't shoot. Those well drops that they go on, well they done, need everybody. someone who can who can get them over the hump. So if Derek White wasn't Derek White, but was a guy who was the shooting equivalent of whatever Derek White was supposed to be, with all the intangibles. So the best offensive player in the NBA. Right, right, because Derek White's awesome at everything except Bobby. for scoring. So if you yeah. got somebody who was just who was just a specialist and a scorer. And again, I, I'm not going to crap on Bobby because he was here, but every time we'd bring up a name and be like, that guy can't defend. We know not everybody's perfect. Right. If you can score 18 to 20 a game and defend, guess what? You're making $30 million and the Celtics aren't going to be able to get you at the trade deadline for friggin' Romeo Langford. That's not an option. So anybody <laughs> you get is going Your to guy. be some, <laughs> is going to be somewhat flawed. <laughs> and, and you know what? Derek White is somewhat flawed and we saw it in, in, a, in, in, a <laughs> and that's it. I mean, he, yeah. he, he can't score. Are they going to go? I don't want to make it an off season. You got to be able to score. So I wonder you what gotta be able to score. There? So, why did they go get Derek White then? If they needed, he's they must have known they needed to score him. Because Derek White lot. checks Don't... off a lot of the boxes that you have. He gives you, he, he gives you a, an element of versatility. He, you're, if you're a team that's all about having defensive switchability, Derek White is a perfect wing guy for you because he can yeah. literally switch damn near every position and not crush you on that mismatch. But to, to John's point, he can't shoot. I think they they thought he could shoot better he, than he did. They projected exactly, Jimmy. Yeah, and Pritchard. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if we really want to start breaking down who did and did not do what, Pritchard's the guy that really underachieved in the series. Do you feel any different that they made it to the finals versus had they lost in seven games to Milwaukee or seven games to Miami? No, no. I mean, listen. Whether they lost in the finals or lost in the second round, they were going to have to go out and get a shooter this offseason. They whether had still some things. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there, there's to me, what happened in the finals. It just only amplified the problems that we've seen all season with these guys. They they need shooters. 
Uh, they have too many stretches where they just just lose their minds and go away from things that work. I don't know whether that's just one of those things. Emei's just got to beat beat the hell into their brains that if I'm giving the ball to Marcus Smart on the block and he's navigating and getting guy shots, let's just keep giving him the ball on the block until something doesn't work. If you are in love with this team or these players or this core, they all have to be a little bit better um, than they are right now, which means that traject it's about trajectory. Do you still believe in the trajectory of Tatum, Brown, Rob and smart because that's your core. Do they need pieces around them? Of course, every, every team does. Um, you know, you see the nets crumbling with their bench around them when, when they were losing key pieces and key support pieces along the way, uh, everybody needs the supporting cast, but do you believe in that core? And I think that that's where most of the conversation centers around, not like wild speculation about going to get like John wall or something silly. It's going to be these guys with maybe a couple of added parts, unless Jonathan you want to Mitchell. do something drastic. Whatever. So that's fine. So, I mean, how do you guys feel about the core going forward after the season, the turnaround, and the way that they kind of, you know, flamed out here at the end? I think you have to definitely – well, first of all, I, I think the question about J, whether Jalen and Jason can play together, I, I think they've shown throughout the course of the postseason that, yeah, when they're both playing at close to their peak optimal game, they can be very effective together. But – the more you watch them play, the, I think there are more questions about really who should be the alpha of, of those two. Uh, Jalen Brown has stretches where I mean he, I mean he's damn difficult to guard. Uh, that ability to drive and finish at the basket, which I don't he, think he does enough of. He's quicker. Uh, his, his handle has, yeah, he's a quicker player. He, his handle he's just, has to get He's much able better. to get by people better than Tatum. Tatum can't get by people really. Right. And that's why I think they, they they work so well to complement each other because Tatum has that outside fire game. Jalen can get to the rim and finish, but Jalen's handle has to get better. Uh, too many so damn well turnovers. They do. I thought I, I sorry, they do. I thought I heard you say that they work so well to complement each other. They do complement each other. Jalen has the inside finish at the rim. Tatum knock down shots from the perimeter, but they. The one thing that they're still struggling to figure out, and they have moments where you just can't understand what the hell's going on in their heads, is they don't seem to recognize when the other one has it rolling. How can they help that guy? Like when Jalen has it going, Tatum is just kind of, eh, you know, floating out there, waiting to get the rock. He's got to he's got to be more active and engaged. Uh, you look at Steph. Um, to me, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson. That's the blueprint for how you can work in, in concert mm -hmm. with each other. Uh, Steph is a much better finisher at the rim than he, he ever gets credit for. Uh, the yeah. Celtics saw that firsthand. Uh, and, and Clay is much more of a perimeter guy who will occasionally get not into the paint, but just get into that mid-range real estate and do some damage that way. Figure out how you can play off each other better. I think that needs to be there. Those two need to, I mean, if we're being honest and real, this is the summer where – they need to gather all those guys together in L.A. or Chicago or, or Atlanta and have like a mini voluntary workout together. Uh, that's uh, you. you still, when you no. they, they need to do that. No. Yes, they do, Tat John. They do. They, but Tatum's going to do it with his boys. Jalen's going to go around the world somewhere. Which is, that's <laughs> the problem, John. They've got to k kill that individual they bullshit. They won't, but they won't, but they won't. They, I mean, maybe be... they do. If this, they, this, this might this, be the summer they do it. If, if, if it's going to happen, it'll happen this summer.